what's going on? Uh, I said we we're going to do a, uh, a disassembly on this new revolver I got from K&W Gunworks. And uh, I'm going to do a disassembly on it. I haven't taken it apart yet. So, I mean, I'm not going to practice taking it apart before you guys see me take it apart because uh, I've had black powder guns before, so I know how to take it apart. But I just want to show you when they're new that they can be a pain in the ass. But I don't know if this is going to be a pain in the ass. Sometimes uh, things just are machined very well, and uh, it'll come apart easy. But it might be tight, so we'll find out. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to disassemble these type of uh, revolvers. If you're thinking about starting to get into these, uh, this would be a good video for you. If you're just a modern guy that likes Glocks and HKs, then uh, you're going to be sitting here bored to tears. Okay? Go watch some reruns of Frasier or something. Okay? Alright. Let's get going. Uh, let me zoom back a little. A lot. Let me zoom back a lot. Okay. First things, first couple things I want to say is I want to thank a couple people. Damn this chair. This chair sucks ass. Ugh. Um. I want to thank uh, a friend of mine, um, Mr. AK47 Master. Listen, I'm not just trying to get this guy. I'm just not. I'm just not trying to get you guys to go over there and sub this guy I really believe in what this guy's doing and uh, we need more people like him this guy has balls balls okay so if you ever seen any of his videos you know what he's all about mr. AK 47 master uh, that's all I'm going to say just uh, I'll put his link down there and go check his videos out and you'll see what I mean and he sent me this this is, it's steel it's cool man we don't dial 911 okay and then it's a 1911 and it says smile away for the flash and it's a really really cool little sign and I will hang this up in the gun room around here somewhere I gotta find out where I can put it love this dude thanks so much I love stuff like this awesome he's the man and another thing I want to let you guys in on that um, the 45 reason is having a really cool giveaway because he's going to have 3,000 subs. He's coming up on 3,000 subs and he's going to have a contest. I think it's a contest and it's going to be an awesome giveaway. So you don't want to miss out on that. So I'll put his link down there too. The 45 reason, Dan. Uh, one, one more uh, thing I, I need to thank is uh, the Woodbury Fire Department of South Jersey. Uh, they sent me this patch and uh, I have a lot of respect for firemen I think they're just as important as our troops cops and everyone that serves the public you know what I'm saying uh, you know they put their lives on the line every day some of them are volunteers some of them get paid but whether they get paid or not they're very unselfish people and uh, believe me you might be looking up at one of these guys one day they might be saving your life so they sent me a patch and that, that's an honor. I'm going to put definitely put that up. Thank you. All right. Let's start this disassembly. And the first thing we want to do is... <clears throat> I have one of these hydraulic chairs. And I guess my ass is so fat now. When I, when I jack it up, it loses the air. It loses pressure. You know what I mean? So it keeps going down. So I keep moving it back up. So that means I'm going to have to like to get a stationary chair because I'm fat. All right. First thing you want to do, this just because this is an antique gun, this will blow your fucking head off. So what you want to do is always safety check it. I'm not one of those safety sallies, but I have common sense a little bit. And uh, first cock. And there's nothing in any of the cylinders. Hold out like that. Nothing in any of the cylinders. It's got nice action. Sounds really nice. And I, I love it. Now when I bring the hammer down, inside here where the when a hammer fits into the channel, there's a little there's a little I can't explain it. 
it's like a V cut and the V cut has a burr on it so when I let the hammer down real slow the hammer gets a little hung up on that burr right there and uh, that kind of sucks but I'm going to fix that I'm not going to wait for fucking Cimarron to make me wait four fucking weeks to uh, to file a fucking burr off because that's what they told me yep that's what you get you get bad publicity when you don't satisfy the customer other than that your guns are beautiful but as far as your gunsmiths and your customer support not digging it so far okay the gun's safe it's a beautiful gun I'm you know I didn't really didn't give you guys a real good look at this didn't I want the uh, muzzle under that bad boy imagine that thing being pointed at you nah that's a that's a cannon another way to check revolvers is uh, especially if you get a used one real quick note always check the uh, cylinder wiggle it it shouldn't move it should move just a hair and then this way and it's very very tight this gun's made tight yeah but that's the only thing I found you always want to find something with a gun there's a little burn there and I'm gonna to have to get that off without screwing the gun up now first thing you want to do is uh, if I can remember I've never done, done this in a long time about seven years since I had one of these kinds um, there's a wedge here this is the main key to taking this gun down this wedge right here okay now it has a screw there and the screw has a flat side and it's on this side and what you gotta do is you gotta spin the screw to the flat sides horizontal to the wedge then once the flat sides horizontal to the wedge you flip the gun around and you get like this like a plastic dowel or something and you hit it from this side out and that that's the first thing you gotta do is get the wedge out get the wedgie out I didn't get too many wedgies in school I got one that was the last one I got okay I gave a lot of them though I was an asshole um just making sure I know what the hell I'm doing here okay now what I'm gonna do is so I don't s scratch my gun up as I want to get a little cotton patch and put it over the screw and make sure you use a gunsmithing screw, uh, gunsmithing uh, screwdriver bits please because they fit the gunsmithing the gun screws better than regular screwdrivers and this screw is exposed so see what I'm fucking saying this screw is exposed so you don't want to scratch it like I almost did right there let me see that fit in there yeah it fits in there so tight that the, the, pat, the patch is making it not fit pretty crazy the only problem with this is it's a okay I got it now I'm going to turn it to screw about right there get that thing out of there and once it's loose then you can use it okay right there just like that now that wedge should come out Oh, I don't even have to hammer it. Look at this. It's coming right out. Okay, sometimes you got to whack it from the other side, but it's coming right out. Look. There's your friggin' wedgie. It's got oil all over it, which is a good thing. Okay, make sure you always look in the direction you took it out, because when you're new at guns, you might forget and flip it around, and you don't know why it's not going in. Always look at the direction it came out. So put it back in. Take it back out. Okay, and put that there. Okay, now the next thing you do, this thing's ready to come apart already. I ain't gonna have to use a mallet or nothing. Because it was machined well. Now this is just gonna unplug from the gun. Look at this. Now this is amazing because I used to take these apart all the time and you needed a hammer to get them apart. So uh Cimarron did a beautiful job where you birdie, whoever made the damn thing, machined it beautiful. And now I can get a really nice easy access cleaning on this pistol yeah rifling is beautiful on that thing it needs to be clean now I can tell it was shot see that there's your uh, partial frame and barrel it's beautiful I like how they discolor the front sight make it look old looks kind of looks copper very beautiful uh, yeah this is really I got a good one I got a good one machine very nicely Okay. After that's out, the cylinder 
should come right off. Now, if it don't, it's because I'm not doing something. Okay, I might have to half cock it because I forget. It's been a while. See, yep, that's what you gotta do. You gotta half cock it. See that? Now the cylinder will come off. Very simple. And that's as far as you want to go with these. See this? Very important. Uh, uh, some guys use oil. I'd rather use a nice grease, a high, high quality grease for that spot. Because that's where the sp cylinder spins. There's a lot of friction. And you don't want the oil to dry up and uh, start wearing out your parts. And there is the uh, beautiful cylinder. That's it right there. So what I'll do is... I don't, I'm not going to clean it because it's clean, but I'll condition it. And uh, a buddy of mine a couple years ago sent me this stuff. And uh, it's real good stuff. It's called New Tetra, Tetra Gun Grease. It's Tetra Gun Grease. It's really good because, because it doesn't dry up. You know, it don't, it don't get like, you know how grease dries up and it starts turning into wax? That sucked. You don't want that to happen. So this doesn't do that. So I'm only going to use this on here because this is like, you know, it's like a car axle. You know what I mean? It's a lot of stress there. So I'll put some Tetra grease on there. Just two lines. And uh, it's good grease because it's not too thick. It's not like really thick grease. It's just good consistency. You don't want it too thick because then it gets sticky. You know what I mean? You want your cylinder to spin fast and freely. You don't want it to be sticky and gummy. And that's why I use that type of grease. That's what I use. Okay. And we'll put it back on. Now the, you got to find the teeth. You got to just touch it and line it up. So how it's lining up nice. And you're good to go. Now I'll put the frame back on and the barrel, whatever. See them two teeth right there? They plug into the barrel. Got two holes. Okay. Just like that. And just like that. Okay, now I will do. See, the wedge is the key, it's like the keystone. You know what I mean? You know what a keystone is? In the old Roman times, when they made them arches, you had this, this stone that was in the middle of the top, held the whole thing together. It's called the friggin' key, friggin' stone. There's your keystone. That bad boy. The wedge in there. Push it in. Now, here's what they tell you in the manual do not, do not, do not over force that in there, or the barrel will press up against the cylinder too much like a brake pad and then uh, you'll be screwed so I'm just going to give it a little that's it I don't want it sticking out no further than it was before I got it okay now I'm just going to get this screw and turn it in its lock position again right there and there it is. It's good to go. Now I just dry fired. That's a no no. I did that by accident because another thing I want to tell you guys about this type of gun when I say hair trigger, I'm not even kidding you. Look, I mean, when I say hair trigger, I'm not even fucking kidding. It's the hair, the trigger, you go, you fucking sneeze on that fucking thing, it's going to go flying forward. Now, that's a good thing, and that's a bad thing. Uh, it's great It's great when you're target shooting, because you don't have to pay attention to the trigger. You can concentrate on the sight. The gun's going to fire, and it's probably going to surprise you, and you'll hit your target better. Uh, but the bad thing is, if you're carrying this thing, no one's going to carry this. I'm saying, if you just have it, if you're fucking around with it in your house and you got ammo in it, be careful, please be careful with this gun, it's very, very dangerous, it really is, okay, so that's it, uh, another thing, you do not ever want to dry fire these, because this hammer slams up against a steel frame, 
So when you're firing it and it's loaded, the primer of the round cushions the landing of the hammer. So when it's going forward, it hits that primer, it cushions it, and it won't slam against the frame. That's why you don't want to dry fire this type of pistol. It's not modern. It's, it's a replica, exact replica. So they didn't have that technology back then with the transfer bar and all that stuff. Okay. So let me know what you think of this video. It's, just, it's as good as I can get it. Best explaining I can do. Okay. I had that. All right, man. Oh, uh, a couple friends of mine wanted to see this thing really up close. So let's put it on macro and then uh, I'll show you. I'll start with the end of the barrel. This camera's pretty good for up close shooting. Work its way up. Very well made, beautiful firearm here. Look at the cylinder. It has uh, the pirate ships all engraved on it. I guess that's what they are. They're ships with sailor sail ships, like pirate ships. And they're engraved all the way around it. It's really, really, not only the camera can really do it any justice. There is the uh, hard, uh, case hardening treatment, heat treatment. Color case hardening, they call it. I think Mr. 45 Bullet would look really good with one of these guns. He needs to get one. I think he needs one. That's all I can really show you. That's the only detail really is there and this part of the uh, back of the hammer on the color case hardening, the loading gate, frame. Pretty grips, real beautiful cherry wood. Really neat. That's it. It's all you really, it really is to show you. Alright guys, I promised you I'd do it with this assembly. There it is. See you guys soon.